Okay, so Joey Wheeler. He's a lovable and memorable character from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series. And he may have started as a weak duelist, but over the course of the series he flourished into a great one. Now you can say a lot of things contributed towards Joey's improvements throughout the series. Witnessing strong duelists and being able to learn from them, his own self-improvement and his will to become better, some of the cards he gained throughout the series to improve his own deck, all of that must have contributed to being a great duelist. But I think there's one tiny little thing that might have helped him out just a little bit, and that's his unbelievable look. Pretty much as soon as Joey started adding look-based cards to his deck, he started doing really, really well in his duels. Honestly, you wouldn't believe the amount of odds that swung in his favour. Keep in mind, though, that he did lose sometimes throughout the series, but the amount of wins to losses... I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I'd put my money on Joey. So because of this, I've decided to do a top 10 video of Joey's look throughout the series. A couple of rules to this, many will be covering cards that Joey used, which helped influence his look. We've already mentioned it, but keep in mind, Joey did lose a few times throughout the series with his look. However, the good outweighed the bad, so keep that in mind. But anyway, here are my top 10 Joey moments where he beat the odds. So at number 10, I've gone with Skull Dice. Okay, first things first, I want to clear up a misconception about this card. So in the real world, the way Skull Dice works is you roll a die, and depending on the result, you take away monster's attack points, which is 100 times the number on the die. So if you got a 1, then you take away 100 attack points. If you got a 6, you take away 600. However, in the anime, it's much more powerful. Basically, in the anime, you divide the monster's attack by the results. So if you have a 6,000 attack point monster, and you got a 6, you divide it by 6, so you've got a thousand attack point monster. That is insane. And the biggest benefit to the anime version of this card is there's no real downside to it and the odds are heavily stacked in the user's favour. So pretty much the only number that you don't want to get on a skull dice is the number one. Any other result will get you a positive effect, so, you know. So this is kind of the reason why this is so low. You have a five in six chance of getting a good result, so obviously it's not really about being lucky and it's more about not being unlucky I guess or is that a double negative so how about we look at some times where Joey managed to flex his luck with this card in episode 64 Joey used this card against Weevil Underwood when perfectly ultimate great moth attacks Joey's parasite parasite Joey activates this card Joey gets a 2 so the attack of perfectly ultimate great moth is halved and while this wasn't enough to defeat it it was enough so that Joey could activate graceful dice to multiply the attack of his own parasite parasite to basically win the duel don't worry, we'll get to Graceful Dice next. Keep that in mind. In episode 68, he used this card against Mako Tsunami. At first, when Amphibian Beast attacks Alligator Sword, Joey activates Fairy Box to try and stop the attack. But Mako activates Yumi so that the alligator in the box has to come up for air because it's submerged, so that he allows him to attack. First of all, I'm pretty sure alligators can survive underwater for quite a while. That's one issue. Number two... That shouldn't really work like that. Number three, you can't activate spell cards in the middle of your battle phase and then attack again. Uh, mm, all right, this is a different video for another time, but I'm calling that right there. That's a shenanigan, Mako Tsunami. But anyway, Joey activates Skull Dice and he manages to get a four. So the attack of Amphibian Beast is divided by four. This allows Alligator Sword to destroy the Amphibian Beast. In episode 105, he uses this card against Johnson. When he uses it this time, he manages to get a six. However, Johnson does cheat to change the result to a 1, but he's still got that 6, the best result you could get. In episode 124, Marek's Dark Gyroid attacks Gearfrid the Iron Knight. Joey activates this card and manages to get a 2. You'll notice the theme, this card seems to get 2 the most, because I imagine the animators didn't want to get 6s, where they start dividing attacks by 6 and getting like 313.75 light attack points or something like that, that's probably why. And while this was enough to destroy Marek's monster, Kyber activates Shrink to halve the attack of Gearfrid the Iron Knight, and unfortunately, it destroys Joey's card. Never mind. As well, in episode 154, Joey used the card against My Valentine. When her Harpy's Pet Dragon attacks the Fiend Mega Cyber, Joey activates this card and gets a 2. So the attack of Harpy's Pet Dragon is halved, and the Fiend Mega Cyber destroys Harpy's Pet Dragon. Lastly, in episode 173, Joey used this card against My again. When one of My's Harpy Lady Sisters attacks Flame Swordsman, Joey activates Activates this card and gets surprise a two. So the attack of Harpy Lady Sister is halved. And while Harpy Lady Sister does destroy Flame Swordsman, it stopped Joey from losing the duel at that point. You know what? How about we try to replicate Joey's look by rolling this and see if we can get anything other than a one? Here we go. Go, dice roll. Great. At number nine, you might have guessed it. 
Graceful Dice. Okay, so Graceful Dice anime effect is, you roll a six-sided die, and you pick a monster with 500 attack points or less. You then multiply that monster's attack by the result of the die. So, a 500 attack point monster, the best result you can have is a 6. 500 times 6 is 3000. So the same thing applies to Graceful Dice as it did to Skull Dice. Basically, any result on this is a good one, except for the number 1, because that wouldn't increase your attack by anything. So again, we've got another one of those best odds, where you've got a 5 in 6 chance of getting a good result, and only a 1 in 6 chance of getting a bad result. So, let's look at some of those lucky moments then, shall we? In episode 58, Joey used this card against Esper Roba, who, keep in mind, was cheating. When Esper's fiend Mega Cyber attacks Swordsman of Landstar, Joey activates this card to roll a die and multiply the attack. The result was a free, so the attack of Swordsman of Landstar tripled. Joey then, to Esper's shock, activates Skull Dice as well to roll a die and divide the attack of the fiend Mega Cyber by the result. The result was a five, so the attack of the fiend Mega Cyber was divided by five. Thus, Swordsman of Landstar destroyed the fiend Mega Cyber. In episode 64, Joey used his card against Weevil under Woods, perfectly ultimate great moth when he attacked his parasite parasite first joey used skull dice to split the monster's attack in half he then used graceful dice to multiply his own monster's attack he managed to get a four so this was perfect because his monster's attack got quadrupled thus meaning it could destroy perfectly ultimate great moth Puffed. again in episode 105 joey used this card against Johnson. He managed to roll the coveted six face, but unfortunately Johnson was cheating, so he adjusted it so it became a one. Unlucky, but he still got that six though. In episode 127, Joey activated this card to multiply the attack of Plasma Eel. Joey gets a six. So the attack of Plasma Eel became 3,000. Because of this, machine duplication and the two Plasma Eels that were equipped to his monsters were destroyed. Nice. And finally, in episode 135, Joey used this card against Seto Kaiba. He activated it on Swordsman of Landstar. He got a 4, so the attack of Swordsman of Landstar got quadrupled. So that was Joey's luck. Let's see if we can do any better and get anything other than a 1. Ah! We're not doing very well with these rolls, I don't think. At number 8, I've gone with Roulette Spider. So in the real world, this card has a kind of different effect. Basically, you roll a die, and depending on the result, one of six different effects can happen. The only real bad one is the number one, because that would result in you getting your life points cut in half. We're not talking about the real version. We're talking about Joey's version. So the anime version's effect is you spin a wheel centered around the monster with the highest attack on the field. After it stops spinning, that monster must attack in the direction that the roulette spider is facing. Now this card was used in episode 59 when Joey used it against Esper Roba. He paid half his life points and span Jinzo around until Esper ordered it to stop. When this happened, Jinzo slowly stopped spinning until it pointed at Esper's Reflect Bounder. This was the perfect result as per this card's effect, Jinzo attacks and destroys Reflect Bounder and the effect of Reflect Bounder then activated which destroyed Jinzo and inflicted the battle damage to Esper Winning him the duel. Well done, Joey. I, I, I can't say much more. At number seven, I've gone with Compensation Meditation. So this card effect is, activate only when your opponent declares an attack. Your opponent selects two cards in their graveyard, shuffle this card with those cards and place them face down on the field. Reveal one of them at random. If you reveal this card, end the battle phase. Afterwards, return the opponent's cards to the top of the opponent's deck and send this card to the graveyard. So this is a classic one in three chance of getting it right. And we saw this in episode 153. Joey used this card against My Valentine. When My attacks the Fiend Mega Cyber with Harpy's Pet Dragon, Joey activated this card. Joey then chose one of the set cards and it was revealed to be this card. Because of this, the battle phase ended and Joey was able to save himself from losing the duel. So he managed to pull it off once. Surely he couldn't do it again. Well, in episode 191, Joey used this card again against Siegfried. Joey then chose a set card, but it was revealed to be Swan Maiden. Because of this, the effect of this card is negated and Valkyrie Brunhill destroyed Maximum 6 and defeated Joey. I tricked you, you thought he was going to get it right. No, Joey does lose sometimes, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. You see, he pushed his luck. At number six, Dangerous Machine Type 6. So many dice cards in this game. So this card is actually the same in the anime as it is in real life. Here are the results that you can get. Number one, discard one card. Number two, your opponent discards one card. Number three, draw one card. Probably the best result you want to get is the number three. Keep that in mind. Number four, your opponent draws one card. Number five, destroy one monster your opponent controls. Number six, 
destroy this card. So these ones are kind of 50-50. You've got three good ones and three bad ones. Well, in episode 191, this card was used against Siegfried. When Joey used this card, on his first result, he managed to get a free, so he was able to draw a card. On Joey's next turn, he activated again. He rolled the die and got a three again. So he got to draw again. Oh my God. And as well, one of the cards that he drew with those draw things is actually something that's going to appear a little bit later on this list. So, next one. At number five, Roll of Fate. So its effect is, you roll a six-sided die, draw cards equal to the result, then remove from play an equal number of cards on the top of your deck. Now, I know this card doesn't really rely on luck because anything is really a positive, since you're getting a one, you get plus one. But really, anything above a two, so three or more, you're getting the best results possible. Well, in episode 171, Joey used this card against Valon. Guess what he got? He got a four, so he got to draw four cards. He used it again in episode 188. This time he was going against the legendary Gambler, so he had to roll higher than his opponent. Joey managed to get a four, and Solomon only managed to get a three. So since Joey's roll was higher, the effect of this card continued, allowing Joey to draw four cards. That's awesome. That's two pot of greeds right there. Again in episode 191, Joey used the card against Siegfried, and amazingly, you might not believe this, but he got a six. So we got to draw six cards. Holy hell. I wonder how many cards we'd draw. That's shenanigans right there. Someone's tampering with this. Is this, is, this a, is this a weighted die? At number four, we have Take One Chance. Its anime effect is you select one random card in your graveyard and activate that card immediately. So in episode 172, Joey used this card against Valon. It was after Joey activated Grave Robber to special summon Valon's Big Bang Blow to his side of the field. Now, Joey had to get Claw of Hermos from his graveyard, and keep in mind, he had a lot of cards in his grave. Now, I can't even tell you the stats on how lucky Joey would have to be. Out of all of these cards, the one random card he gets from his graveyard happened to be Claw of Hermos. Uh, the odds are low, but of course he gets it and he's able to summon Big Bang Dragon Blow and win the duel with it. At number three, Gamble. The personification of this episode, really. So the way this card works is a simple coin toss. You call heads or tails. If you call it right, draw until you have five cards. If you call it wrong, skip your next turn. In episode 105 in Joey's duel against Johnson, he activates this card to toss a coin. Joey calls heads and Joey was right. But Johnson cheats by changing the result to Tails, forcing Joey to skip his next turn. 50-50 chance, right? How hard could that be? God damn it. At number two, a card Joey used called Star Blaster. Its effect was you select one face of monster you control and roll a six-sided die. Increase the level of the selected monster by the die result. Then you contribute the selected monster to special summon one monster from your hand with an equal level. Now then, the nature of this card actually requires you to be extremely lucky. Now, the only two times that Joey ever used this, he was trying to summon the Red Eyes Black Dragon. So, the way it works is if you've got a one-star monster, you'd need to roll a six to get a seven so you can summon your Red Eyes. So that's kind of how it works. In episode 161, he used this card against Rex Raptor. He needed a six to increase his sheep token to seven. What did he get? He got a six. <laughs> Fair play. And again, in episode 191, Joey used this card against Siegfried. He targets his Sasuke Samurai for this card, and he rolls a die. Now, he needs to get a five, and what does he get? He gets a five. He uses it to summon his Red Eyes Black Dragon. So yeah, that actually requires some very specific one in six luck. The fact that he managed to do it off both times he used it. That's really, really impressive. Right then, so at number one, I have gone with the almighty, the all-powerful Time Wizard. Now, this card was given to Joey in episode three by Yugi Moto, and this was one of the best tech cards that Joey could ever be given because he uses it a lot throughout the series. So the effect of this card is called Time Roulette. How fitting. The way the effect works is that the monster span an arrow on its wand which would randomly point to one of six spaces. There are four skulls which represented a negative effect or two engines which represented a positive effect. The positive effect advanced time by like a thousand years or something and would normally like destroy monsters or age them considerably weakening them. It also turned his baby dragon into thousand dragon. Now the odds of this card are a weird one. Early in the series it actually looks like it's quite even between the good effect and the bad effect like the spacing of the points seem to be pretty equal so it's a basically a 50 50 chance now this actually matches its real world effects as it's a 50 50 coin flip however later in the series you can see that the gears actually become smaller so it actually looks like it's harder to get so it's up to you 
what you want to go with, but we're going to go with a 50-50 chance to start with. Now, maybe you guys can try this at home. Get a coin and try and flip it 10 times and see how many times you can get heads in a row. I guarantee you're not going to get 10 heads in a row. It's possible, don't get me wrong, but the odds are slim. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is Joey, throughout the entire series, only fails at the time roulette once. Yep, you get every other time, he wins. The only time he got it wrong was against Bones. This was during episode 18, when he summoned this card, he used its effect, but the gamble failed. As a result, both this card and the Flame Swordsman were destroyed, and Joey took damage equal to half the attack of the Flame Swordsman's total attack. So yeah, that was just a one time. How about we look at all the times he didn't lose though? Episode 6, Joey used this card against My Valentine. He succeeds, he transforms his baby dragon into a thousand dragon, Harpy's lady sisters become Harpy lady grandmas, so he wrecked her. Episode 11 against Rex Raptor, Joey flips this card face up and activates his effect. Joey succeeds in its effect and the effect destroys Rex's red eyes black dragon and inflicts damage equal to half of Rex's monster to his life points, which they kind of added that effect on there because that wasn't really close, but it ended up being that he won the duel. Episode 32, he used it against Bandit Keith. He activated his effect and he succeeded. So Baby Dragon turned into Thousand Dragon and it decreased the attack of Barrel Dragon by 800, which allowed Thousand Dragon to destroy Barrel Dragon. And again in episode 34, he used this card against Yami Yugi. He succeeded in the effect, so his effect transformed his Baby Dragon again into Thousand Dragon. However, unexpectedly, he did turn Yugi's Dark Magician into Dark Sage. And while it was a shame that Joey didn't know that Yami Yugi had teched the Dark Sage because that would be the perfect counter against Time Wizard. He still managed to pull off some luck there. Again, episode 59, he used this card against Esper Roba. And while the effect did work, he managed to get his Thousand Dragon. Esper reveals that Jinzo's armor is made of an alloy that cannot corrode or age for 10,000 years. So yeah, that was a bit of shenanigans right there, if I'm going to say so myself. Joey should have got the effect off absolutely fine, but... Esper Upper is cheaper at the end of the day. Episode 137 against Seto Kaiba, he used this card. He managed to get his Thousand Dragon out, but before it could be used against Blue Eyes White Dragon, Kaiba did activate into Dimensional Matter Transporter. However, the effect still worked. In episode 154, Joey used this card against Mai. He used it to merge with the Claw of Hermos to create an all new card. Joey then activated the new card's effect, which was able to place a random number from 1 to 6 on each of Mai's monsters. This card would then banish those monsters for a random number of turns, but depending on the result. So yeah, that was all of the moments that Joey managed to flex his luck throughout the series. Were there any other luck-based moments that I missed throughout the series? Was there any other things that I could have added? Please let me know in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like, and I might make some more top 10 videos. Now, I haven't been very lucky throughout this top 10, but I think I'm going to put it all on this coin flip. I'm going to put it on heads. Everything. It's all going on. Heads, here we go.